Maestro Joanne Falata is on the phone with me from Buffalo, and we will talk now about Leonard Bernstein's Mass, which is coming up on the 23rd, that's Friday uh, evening at 8 o'clock, and Saturday at 8 o'clock, both performances at Chrysler Hall in downtown Norfolk. And uh, good day to you, Joanne. Hello. So, this is, uh, this is a big thing for you, the Leonard Bernstein Mass. Well, it's an enormous undertaking. It's my first time conducting it. I think uh, 99% of the people involved have not done it before. Uh, it's an astonishing work, and it's a work that I've come to, you know, with a little bit of fear, knowing a year ago that we were doing this, and, uh, and I have fallen totally in love with it. I find it overwhelming, poignant, uh, just uh, almost like a cathartic experience to go through this journey. It's, it's truly a, a, an astonishing work of music. And it's not not only is it uh, just it's not just music. It's a, it's actually a stage work. I mean, it has uh, it has right. all sorts of things going on. Tell tell us a little bit well, about right, Anthony. It's hard to describe. I mean, it, it's a theater piece, really. I suppose in in, in the true sense, um, there's a there's a story that's going on, and with the orchestra, of course, playing. But there are singers. Uh, there are some singers who are opera singers, or some singers who are Broadway singers. Uh, there are two choruses involved. Dancers are involved. Uh, the singers are acting all the time, telling this this story of uh, of really a, a kind of a faith and crisis of faith and a return to faith, and it's um, it's an amazing thing to see. I, I I've been telling everyone I possibly can tell anyone I run into in the street in Virginia, Norfolk, or, or Virginia Beach that you have to come to this, you have to see this, you have to experience it. You will never forget it. And now I know why. You know, I came came to learn about this piece actually through David and Susan Good who told me several times that they had been at the premiere in 1971, and they told me they'd never forgotten it. It was a night that they will never forget, that stayed with them all these decades, and I thought, wow, that's a powerful experience to remember all these years. Now I know why. They're, they're absolutely right. I mean, people who are at this performance will never forget it. It's, it's, it's an overwhelming piece of theater, music, and, and, uh, and acting. Something that some people may not know about this work is that it actually also includes the work of Paul Simon and Stephen Schwartz. It does. It does. And Paul Simon, of course, is one of my favorites and favorites. Uh, I'm particularly tickled about it. It seemed that he sent a, a little gift to Leonard Bernstein, a quatrain uh, of a poem, really. And Bernstein was so tickled by this that he put it in the mass. And it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's in typical 60s style. It's a poem about... Uh, you know, give us peace, and and uh, and uh, you know we need change, and and the feeling of unrest, and, and the and the feeling that was so strong in the '60s of of uh, finding a better way, you know, finding peace, and finding a way for people to coexist and take care of our earth. And it's it's funny, Anthony, all of that is still so relevant now. Yes. So occasionally, the the piece people have said, oh, that's a piece from the '70s. You know, it doesn't make any sense in our time absolutely untrue. I think the piece makes more sense in our time. We see it in an interesting way as, as being a reflection of what was happening in our country and our world then, but but it's almost more powerful now because all of those wishes and, and, and the, the longing for peace and for and for finding what God is about it is even stronger now. And the work was commissioned by Jackie Kennedy for the opening of the Kennedy Center in 1971. Do you know when when did Bernstein start working on this? You know, I I, I know he was working on it for for a couple of years, but I also know he he found it difficult. He, yes, he found it he found it tough working through this piece and and uh, treating a mass. I mean, this is this is really a big challenge. I mean, masses have been been um, set by by Palestrina and Mozart and Beethoven. I mean, the greatest composers have set the mass, but Bernstein wanted to do something different. So in addition to the the movements of the mass, the text of the Catholic mass, he puts in a lot of, of uh, comments on that. There's a lot of extra material uh, that's much more contemporary than the mass text. And the piece became, I'm sure he saw this happening, uh, I mean, it was just it was going in every direction. It became a world unto itself, and probably reining that in and making all of that make sense together was a challenge. But but she did commission it, and I think that they settled on a mass partly because of the staunch Catholicism of the Kennedys, of John Kennedy, and it was a wonderful tribute to him and his beliefs 
to set a mass. But uh, this was no ordinary mass. And in fact, uh, as you know, the, the Catholic Church was not very happy with the outcome of this mass. Right. And it even has a rock band. Oh, it has a rock band. It has blues singers. Um, it's uh, it's set in a in a in a in an interesting way. I mean, it's set really sort of in a church with a, a celebrant who's the priest and his congregation. And and very simply, I mean, the celebrant is is trying to to help his congregation see that that God is the answer and God is always with us. And and the young people, these 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 members of his parish are questioning, well, well, how come God is not helping us? I mean, why isn't God here when these terrible things are happening? And, and we start to feel the beginning of this unrest about, well, where is God? You know, we need him now. And that's what the congregation is singing. We need him now. And, and so uh, he, he finally, after trying to, to keep their faith alive, he suffers a devastating crisis of faith. He doesn't know if he believes anymore. He he's overwhelmed by everything he sees around him, and the congregation actually brings him back to faith. And the end is one of the most moving things that that I've ever experienced. Him him going through this terrible this terrible um, kind of psychological questioning and, and breakdown of everything he believes in, and his realization that God is there all along. And it's it's a very beautiful ending very beautiful ending of, of, a, of a tumultuous piece. Can you tell me something about uh, about the performers, the various performers for this performance? Well, we, we have performers from all types of musical backgrounds, a couple from, from our region, which we're very happy about. Um, I actually went up with Bob Schaup and Robert Cross and our director, Pam Berlin, to audition in New York City at, at, in Chelsea Studios, and we had... Um, all of the greatest young singers and actors and actresses coming in to sing parts of the Mass for us, and we were able to put together an incredible cast. I mean, these people are so vibrant. They're so gifted. They're such great performers that they make this story come alive. I think people sitting in the house will feel that they're right there in the room with them, that they're, they're going through this as well. They're totally convincing. They're totally compelling. It's really overwhelming to be in the middle of all of that. And something else that's uh, really attractive about this, uh, this set of performances is that Jamie Bernstein, uh, Leonard Bernstein's daughter, uh, will be doing a uh, pre-performance uh, panel. That's right. And we're, we're really honored to have her because she's, in a way, the kind of the caretaker of her father's legacy. And, um, and she's the one who's going to ask her a lot of questions about what was your father thinking while he was writing this? Was he, was he struggling? Was he worried? Uh, was he concerned at, the, at the, 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 the frightened reaction of the Catholic Church or even the government about what this piece was about? Um, how did he react to all of that? And I, I know that all of us want to know the answers to those questions. And, and uh, she, she, having her here with us is going to be a, a great thing. Well, this sounds like uh, it's going to be lots of fun, and uh, I want to thank you for, for coming on and, and talking with us about this. Well, thank you, Anthony. It's, it's really it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I hope people will take advantage of it. All right. Th- Joanne Folletta, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.